great um, segue, Maravik, of uh, what are the different business intelligence tools besides Tableau and Power BI? And that's what I'm going to talk about today is understanding the landscape of business intelligence tools. So what are business intelligence tools, period? So I just want to give a definition to this as we're going to be talking about it a lot over the next couple of weeks. So they're essentially a software application and they are used to collect data, analyze the data, transform the data, uh, and then present it to help make decisions within organizations. So the idea being you have raw data like we had in our um, applicant data, just, just rows, columns and rows in a spreadsheet. And you want to turn that into something that people care about and making it easier for companies to understand trends over time, make decisions and improve business processes. Also, what a lot of people think of when they think of business intelligence tools is uh, sitting at a desk and opening up um, you know, a dashboard and then pointing. So this is what uh, I want for everyone here is to be as cool as this stock photo. Look at this trend over time. Oh yeah, did you notice? We could all be stock photo images one day. So how are, they, how are BI tools used in companies? First obvious one is data collection. So I think what's cool about business intelligence tools versus using an Excel spreadsheet. So kind of the graduation is people start in Excel and um, you know that's kind of the basis of a lot of where data ends up is in Excel spreadsheets. But when you're using a software like a business intelligence tool, you can pull in data from different sources. So if you are doing marketing analytics and you run campaigns on ads, you can pull in all of the marketing data and then you can combine it with your data of people that have actually purchased, maybe that's in your database, and you can add those two data sources together. So that's one benefit of using a business intelligence software. Another one is it uh, improves efficiency. So you have less manual calculations. Maybe you noticed in Excel that it was really easy to have like an error in a formula or you change one thing and everything breaks. So in a BI tool, you kind of set it up and then it runs as a dashboard um, and there's less error, human error prone after you get it all set up. Their use is performance monitoring. So sometimes in companies, you'll walk in and they'll have screens um, mounted in their headquarters and it'll have a dashboard running and it will be big numbers of what their goals are for their sales. Like on a, on our sales floor, we had big dashboards for the sales team to know how much they sold that quarter and their percent to their quota goal. Yeah, just monitoring progress when you have goals in place, data goals. So another method of goal setting is companies have what's called key performance indicators, KPIs. And so they set those at the beginning of the year or like on a quarterly basis of kind of like a sales goal or quota. We want to hit this much in revenue. So our, our KPI for Q1 is $250,000 in revenue. And so then they can have this dashboard that shows as the sales come in, how much revenue they've hit so far for that quarter. And then obviously the decision-making of, uh, like what products are they going to develop? What markets are they going to expand into? Resource allocation, things like that. Anybody work at a company that has a BI tool that they use currently? Can you share about how uh, the BI tool is used internally at your company, at Red Cross? I mean, there's about a million reports <laughs> throughout the Red Cross. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe how much data goes into blood collection just across the nation, you know, to make sure that we are collecting what we need to. Um, so I have about, probably about 15 reports that I run uh, every week just to kind of see where I'm at and our collections and staff performance and stuff like that. So, yeah. That's is, when you say report, is that a dashboard? Yeah. Yeah. So I look at the dashboards and then I export, I export everything. So I'll like export my reports so I can like sift through them and see what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of ways to use BI tools in companies. And what I want to show next is the popular BI tools in the market. So there's the, the most, what, what I would say were the most popular BI tools on the market. Um, we've got Tableau, which is, uh, which was purchased by Salesforce. So it wasn't always a Salesforce company, <laughs> uh, Power BI, which, uh, I'm fairly certain has always been a Microsoft company. We've got Looker, which was purchased by Google. And then we have Domo, which is a Utah based business intelligence tool. And so I have personally used these three. I have not personally used Domo, which is why I'm really excited that we're partnering with Domo in this class. These are the tools that we'll cover in the class. And um, again, it's not subjective of me saying these are the most popular tools, but this is a really popular um, tool for, anal for, for analysts to analyze what are the up and coming trends in software. So it's called this Gardner Magic Quadrant. They have them for all different areas of software. And so this is the Magic Quadrant for analytics and BI tools. It's very small. Um, so I will zoom in for you. So, so the quadrant is you have challengers over here, leaders over here, visionaries over here, and niche players over here. So then it has all of the, um, these are all different names of different business intelligence tools. 
So zoomed in, you've got Microsoft as on the leader visionary quadrant, Salesforce, Google Looker, and then a challenger is Domo, which is more up and coming um, business intelligence tool. Oh, for you, Kelsey, this uh, Qlik, which is what you- It's, it's just, it's called Qlik. Don't That's learn it. Cool. It's yeah. old, it's a dinosaur. <laughs> I wish okay. my clients didn't well, love here it. in this like leaders um, and Oracle is also a dinosaur, um, you know, so like none of the, like not even on here are like the deep note or the hex, which are like very much in like this bottom corner, but it's what, it's kind of what the like up and coming analysts use, like the startup -y analysts. So these tools are for the more um, like robust, big kind of companies it's that have like, like established tools. companies, yeah, yeah. established tools a startup is going to use something like the deep note or the hex. And so uh, like having exposure to know how to like iterate fast and like use a new tool. And there'll be five years from now, there'll be a whole new set of new tools for business intelligence. Um, so software is like that. Things get bought, they get killed off and you just kind of have to evolve. So here are the, here's a matrix of the benefits of BI tools in companies. So at the top, you've got the feature, um, you've got Tableau, Power BI, Looker, and Domo. Tableau, I would say, is a really big contender for data visualization. You know, you've seen it in your um, your, your dashboard that's really powerful for data visualization. Power BI is really good if you're in the Microsoft ecosystem. We talked about that. So Looker is good for data modeling. Um, so data modeling is this idea that you take your data and you design tables exactly how you want it. That's a brief overview. And then the word on the street is Domo is the best for collaboration, being able to share across departments. So for ease of use, Tableau is uh, user-friendly and drag and drop. Power BI is easy for Microsoft users. <laughs> um, Looker is great because it's a web-based interface um, and it does a lot of drag and drop. So it's not something you have to download. It's all in the web, which I love. Um, and then the word on the street again is that Domo has an intuitive um, interface. And then there's just, um, yeah, different costs, pros and cons when you're evaluating it for your company. So here's an example of a Tableau dashboard. You know, it's just, you can make it really pretty. You can make it as pretty as, as this uh, emergency room dashboard. This is an example of a Looker dashboard. And I just want to pull this up real quick because I thought it was really interesting. Um, this dashboard is a dashboard of a franchise called Pure Maintenance. And actually, it's actually one of the biggest um, like companies in Utah, I guess. But uh, these are the purchase locations for this franchise. And you can just scroll through it. So like a dashboard can be a table if you want it to be. And these are the unpurchased locations. So there's 173 purchase franchise pr franchises for this Pure Maintenance franchise. And then there's 433 unpurchased territories that people um, are able to purchase. And you can see Joshua Bellows here it has nine franchises. Uh, so this was like shared with me randomly. Um, and I just think it's a cool example of how you can use a uh, Looker dashboard um, as just tracking um, franchise pur purchases. Power BI, there is this like community. So I found this example of Power BI. Okay, so this is um, like the landing page for this dashboard. And it's like click to view reports, sales report, customer report, HR report. And then it has some um, like uh, just a summary statistics there. So let's look at the sales report. And then you get to this report of this is, this dashboard gives an overview of sales performances at this supermarket and it allows for monitoring of regional branch performance. So you can get so detailed on some of these dashboards and it's basically like a website. This dashboard becomes like um, a full website with a landing page and you navigate to different pages. And that's what's actually really cool about Power BI is that ability to navigate like a website. This one is an example of Domo. So this one's actually kind of pretty. I like, I like pretty things. So this is um, on domo.com slash dashboard slash finance. This is their example once it pulls up. So you've got your forecast model, your internal reporting, FP&A metrics. And again, however, we were talking about like KPIs and percent of total. So this is showing they have like a new bookings goal of $2 billion and they're at 1.12 billion. And so they can see their percent to goal and they can keep this on and monitor. So that was uh, Looker. So we got Power BI, Looker, Domo, and, um, and then I want to talk about emerging trends in business intelligence. So obviously anywhere in tech, everyone's talking about, um, AI and what AI is doing. So we saw it in deep note where it was like helping you autocomplete your SQL. And that was like somewhat helpful, um, troubleshooting. What have folks seen as far as AI in Tableau or BI or power BI? Did anyone notice any AI in either of those tools? So that's not quite emerging yet. Um, yeah, there's uh, there's going to be, there's going to need, because these are the like more established tools. So they move slowly. So it's the smaller tools, like the deep note that is able to move quickly and have 
AI embedded in their tool. Whereas um, Power BI is just not, it's not there yet. Uh, same with Tableau. So I'm a little surprised that I didn't notice that there was more, wasn't more AI. Um, and that's like Tableau show me feature, but they've always had that. That was before AI. So something to look out for is how AI is going to impact these um, like bigger BI tools. Power BI has a co-pilot feature. Okay. Tell me more. Um, yeah, Bonnie's all over it. Yeah. So Copilot is Microsoft's name for their AI tool. Um, and so I don't use it a ton, like at my work, but like, I just downloaded the newest Power BI to my personal computer. And there is that Copilot um, button that's up there. You can click on it and have it run analysis for you and kind of give you like, so you have all these visualizations. You can have it do like a text summary of what you're looking at. Um, it's not always reliable though. So it might be there, which is kind of cool right. and fun to play around with. Same but with SQL AI, right? Like, yeah, you got to be smart enough to like, know to know. Uh, that's not correct. You're not giving me the right thing. So it is, it's there, but it's slow. Um, I, I use Microsoft's Copilot the same way that I use ChatGPT. It's like a conversation, sort yeah. of like a, hey, how do I do this feature? But as far as getting it to develop stuff as a dashboard, it's hit or miss. Okay. Yeah. And I didn't notice anything in Tableau and I haven't heard anything about um, Tableau. So that's a little bit surprising to me because every company is like I'm an every company says that they're an AI company now and I haven't noticed how Tableau is using it so interesting another emerging trend in business intelligence is this idea of data democratization so this visualization right here is without data democratization is you have data you have your data team as the everything has to go through the data team and then marketing can have data sales can have data service can have data product can have data but when you democratize data um and that's what we did at GitHub with Looker we like built out Looker, and then the, the sales team could go in and make their own dashboards and the product um, managers could go in and make their own dashboards. And the data team just owned the like warehouse and um, like the tables, but everyone could make their own dashboards because we had like governance over the data warehouse. And it made it so much better because we weren't like holding everyone up from having to like, getting a request into data and then us having to pull data and give it to everyone. So that's one, um, one thing called data democratization. democratization. Do you do, what do you do about like, anyone want to chime in about data democratization in your company, Kelsey or Tanya or um, Kinan? Well, my company has not done a good job of democratizing the data. Everyone pretty much goes through me and the data scientists to get anything. Okay. Yeah. And, and it's um, a little exhausting, right? <laughs> it slows me down from other things when the people like need me to stop and like do a specific report. Like I need you to pull this from the database for me and then give it to me. And so we are actually in the process of automating reports so that they can run them themselves. Yeah. So you're democratizing data and it's a process. Mm -hmm. like, yep. Okay. yep. We're working that way. That's our aspiration. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. really it comes down to the data team just saying, I don't want to answer your questions anymore <laughs> and just not having the bandwidth really. Um, and then it's like a forcing function to democratize the data and let everyone self-serve, but you have to have controls of what people can see if there's sensitive information. Um, and then, um, oops, I got this zoomed in. So another emerging trend in business intelligence is this idea of embedded analytics. So embedded analytics is really cool. Um, and this is something that we did at GitHub, but I'm going to show you an example of this here. So data.sf.gov is the San Francisco city government has a whole portal dedicated to data. And so here is an example of a, a Power BI dashboard embedded in their website. And you can go look at the map of registered businesses in San Francisco. You can select the neighborhood here. So I lived in the, so I was in Western edition. So you can filter right there. I'll go change down, apply. And I can zoom in here and it's really interactive. And these are all the businesses in the neighborhood that I lived and I can click and say, oh, there's Mama Goo's natural rem remedies that, uh, you know, is just down the corner from me. Um, so that's one way that you can embed uh, dashboards into a website and then make it self serve from there. And then another um, emerging trend is the idea of people are on the go all the time. So they want their dashboards to be able to be viewable on mobile. And um, so making sure, and um, I think there's the, there was this in Tableau, if you saw at the top, there was like a, like a view in mobile. So you could test out what the mobile view was. But um, just being aware of when you're building a dashboard in a company, potentially you are able to view it on mobile so that people can see their dashboard on the go. So that's, and then just a shout out to the difference in between the ecosystem and community. So Tableau and Power BI have a very robust community between Tableau Public and all the things on um, Microsoft community. Whereas 
um, Domo and Looker don't have as much community um, involvement. So I like Tableau when I was first getting started because I could go on Tableau Public and I could get inspiration from all of these different dashboards and pull it down and see what they did. They don't have that feature on Domo and um, Looker as much where you can like reverse engineer dashboards. So there's some pros and cons that way. And just to shout out to governance and security, um, different tools are good for different security measures. Again, Looker and all the tools have this ability, but Looker has this built-in data layer where you can lock down what people can see based on what their access levels are. So again, if you're working at a big company, you don't want everyone in the company to have, have access to each of your customers' names and addresses. You want that locked down to only the data team. And then maybe sales can see the aggregate of, uh, you know, the total sales in this region. And you can access by very specifically to, you know, the Eastern sales team can see the Eastern numbers and the Western sales team can see the Western numbers. So security and governance of the data is another thing to be aware of um, in the world of business intelligence tools and understanding what they're good for. So that's, that's my overview of um, understanding BI tools. Any questions? Yeah, Catherine. Yeah, I was just going to say the one that you pulled up about all like the businesses in like San Francisco, I thought that was really cool. Is that all like public record that they've done just for that area? Yeah. Okay. And it, um, so this, so this will be linked in the slides. So you can go in and check it out, but um, it's called data SF. You can see the open data, find city data and like transportation. This is, I mean, that's so smart. Like what if you're trying to like compete against other businesses. Oh, I want to start a business in this neighborhood. Well, there's five other businesses like that. So maybe go to the next neighborhood. Like it's just so yeah. to me. Yeah. So it's all public. So this is like a map of parking meters, but Utah has its own version. So Utah open data, state of Utah, open data portal. So open data.utah.gov and um, open data catalog, catalog, same thing. And here you can go to, let's see, what did I look at recently here? Businesses? How to guide to data, Medicaid prescriptions in Utah, um, total beds by hospital in Utah. Um, so they have a bunch of open data. The only thing about that I've noticed about this open data for Utah is it's a little, um, it'll say somewhere here. So that's this, I, I wanna know like the last time this data was updated. So I can go to about, and I can see that it was last updated um, April 19th, 2019. So it's a little old. Whereas I think the San Francisco does a better job of um, like having a more updated data. So yeah, so it's it's pretty cool that there's just kind of open data that you can start analyzing in a lot of different areas. So Utah has its own version and San Francisco has its own version. Salt Lake City open data. There we go. Open data. Cool, active building permits, active planning petitions. Yeah, cool. And then you see this was last updated in 2023. So a little more fresh than what we were looking at that was updated in 2019 water consumption by block. Yeah. This is Salt Lake City business licenses, but it was last updated in 2018. So just being aware of how fresh your data is. Cool. Well, thanks for listening to my TED talk about business intelligence tools.